Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Chakadash, the honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, peace and salutation to the Akiyam, to the elect that are scattered across the four corners of this earth, preaching the truth and faith and sincerity. I'm the brother Shamala from the GMS Houston camp, and this is going to be a, um, a lesson entitled, The Lord is Only Near Those That Sincerely Seek Him. Because you got um, people that just think that, you know, when I speak of people, I'm speaking of the Israelites. Right? The ones that basically are not in the know of being Israelites, that are hooked on these um, different philosophies, mainly Christians, right? Let's just, let's just say that, Christians. And you even have Israelites with this type of mindset, you know, that you can be however you want, and the Lord will still basically be dealing with you. That the Lord's love is unconditional. That his benefits and that him protecting you and that him guiding and watching over you, right, blessing you, all these things are unconditional. And that's far from the truth. Because you have to move a particular way for the Lord to even deal with you. You know, starting with the belief in his son, Yahweh Shah, because everything is through Yahweh Shah. But first, it starts with truly seeking him, seeking him through the 100% truth, which the Lord has given men on the earth, which we believe to be the apostles and the elders, you know, on down in Grand Millstone. The Lord, the Most High, Yahweh, gave these men, or certain men, right, which I said the apostles and the others on down, 100% truth. And you got to seek him according to that, according to that knowledge, right, with an humble spirit. The Lord speaks about the broken and contrite heart. All of these things, you got to come correct with the Lord for him to even come nigh unto you. And to bless you with all these spiritual things. All right, but start here. Start off here in James 4 and 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to the Most High, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So submit. All right, which submit. Let's just get this word real, real quick. Strong's G, 5293. Upataso. Upataso. To arrange under, to subordinate, to subject, to be put in subjection. To subject oneself, obey, to submit to one's control, to yield to one's admonition or advice to obey or to subject. All right, so to be obedient, to be in subjection to the Lord's will, to what he wants, that's submitting unto the Heavenly Father. You're giving up your ways and what you want to do. And you are following and being obedient to the Heavenly Father. And you letting, you putting this truth before everything else in this world. Right? Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Right? Which Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Ba Hashem. Basically, that's, that's the Hebrew. It means in the name, Ba, in, Ha, is the Shem, his name. And then Yahweh Shai, which the world is going to call Jesus Christ. That's his name. All right? So put in this truth before everything. That's how you submit yourself to the Heavenly Father and be obedient in applying these things. So you submit yourself to the Most High. says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Why? Because now the Most High is about to draw, draw near unto you. He's going to flee from you because... The Lord made him flee because you got that spirit on you. The Lord got his protection on you. Draw nigh to the Most High and he will draw nigh to you. See, so you got to draw nigh to him and he will draw nigh to you. He says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. ye double -minded. So basically, you got to change your ways. You can't just come how you are, like the Christian church like to say. You can't just come how you are. You can't just be who you want to be. And the most side would just love you and accept you. No, 
the Lord has requirements and you have to meet those requirements. And you have to discipline yourself to those requirements. A lot of people, they don't want to be disciplined. They don't want to have to change their ways. They don't want to be wrong about how they're living. Scripture say there's a way which seems right unto the person, but the end, but the but the uh the end of it are the ways of death. I mean it's gonna lead you unto death by you leaning on to your own understanding, want to be right in your own head. Zechariah 1 and 3. Therefore, say thou unto them, Thus said Yahweh of hosts, Turn ye unto me, said Yahweh of hosts, and I will turn unto you, said Yahweh of hosts. Right? says the same thing. Turn unto him, and he will turn unto you. But it got to be done sincerely. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus said Yahweh of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear nor hearken unto me, said Yahweh. Right. So this is what you're supposed to do. Turn from your evil ways. Turn from your evil doings when you turn unto the Heavenly Father. If not, it's not done in sincerity and it's not done in truth. The Lord is not going to accept you. You're going to be rejected. Simple and plain. Psalms 145 and 18, Yahweh is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. See, it got to be done in truth. See, and the effort just said Yahweh is nigh unto all them that call upon him, right? People would have took the, the idea that it can just be anybody. You can be how you are. Just if you call upon him, it's just all good. But it said to all that call upon him in truth. It's all about worshiping the Lord in truth, not how you want to worship him. This is, um, what is that? John 4, 24. The Mosai is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Well, I started 23. But the hour coming and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. See, so the most I want the true worshipers. And that's basically the elect, which elect means chosen. The chosen ones, the chosen ones, you know, before the earth was even created, before the Lord even had established everything else, he already had set up this, this story that was going to play out, that he's going to have the chosen ones of the of the nation of Israel that were going to be destined for salvation and the chosen ones that were going to be destined for destruction that wasn't going to make it, that wasn't going to believe. And, but it says that the Father seeks such a worship. So he wants the true worship. You can't be bullshit. You can't be half-assing. Right? You can't be a hypocrite. And you can't, you know, just, just say out of your mouth what are you going to do? No, you got to do these things. Says the most size of spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So must. It's not a negotiation. First Chronicles 28 and 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the most high, thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. But yeah, I will search all hearts and understand that all the imaginations of the thoughts. So you got to come correct. Because the Lord will see through all of that. He know you sincerely seek him or not. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee out forever. All right, so you will be cast off even if you seek him, but you're not doing it sincerely. And people that, that cast him off as well. Because you got, you know, certain... False prophets, pastors, whatever you want to call them, that says that, hey, the Lord still loves these people that are doing abominable things. That don't want to hear, you know, the, the about the law, statutes, and commandments. Right? They don't want to hear anything about the Heavenly Father and order, discipline. They don't care. But they will still tell these people that the Lord is still with them, that he's still covering them, that he's still guiding them. It's always... Um, a time to where people will lose a loved one 
oh, he didn't do anything, or he didn't deserve this. But the way that he was living his life, he did deserve it because scriptures say that, hey, you reap what you sow. If you if you plant wickedness, what you think you're going to get? You're going to get that wickedness back. That's how these things work. It's how the Heavenly Father designed things. You forsook him, said he will cast thee off. And what that means is that you're not going to have protection, hey, that the Lord ultimately is going to destroy you. Isaiah 29 and 13, wherefore the, the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips to honor me, but I have removed their heart far from me and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. So they draw near unto him with their mouth and with their lips to honor him. So they, they say things as if they are honoring the Heavenly Father. And that they're like as if they are doing the things that they're supposed to do when they're not. It's all just lip service. It's all just words at the end of the day with no actions backed up behind it. So this person is not a person who has changed and is sincerely seeking him. This person is still a sinner willfully because sinning willfully is basically not believing in your Yahawashah. And if you really believe in your Yahawashah, you're going to have them actually behind it to show your belief in your Yahawashah. All right? But hey, this is basically still a sinner because Yahawashah covers your sins. John 9, 31. Now we know that the Most High heareth not sinners, so you ain't drawn into him sincerely or you casting him off. You are classified as this sinner. That the Most High is not going to hear, that the Most High is not drawing nigh unto. He says, But if any man be a worshiper of the Most High and doeth his will, him he heareth. See, you got to draw, well, Isaiah, no, that was Psalms 145. In 18, it says that all that call upon him in truth, he is nigh unto all them that call upon him in truth, but he hear not sinners. You see, so it's conditional. It's not on your own terms. The Lord is not going to accept you on your own terms or, or how you want to be, how you feel you should be. So like the Lord just accepts everything, decides to know that ain't how it go. He gave us order. He gave us instructions. He gave us a way to live on this earth. And the Lord ain't negotiating about that. Ain't no compromising. This is the most high. He can just take you out. He can just take his spirit back. He ain't got to negotiate with you. He ain't got to negotiate with any of us. He created us. You got to follow him and, and obey him. He don't have to obey you. 2 Chronicles 15 and 13, that whosoever would not seek Yahweh Paul of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. So a, so a person that's not seeking the Lord and not seeking him sincerely counts in this as well. You're going to be put to death. Right? That's just plain. Person that's you know, casting off this thing or rejecting it, rejecting the truth, rejecting the Lord, or they know that they're Israelites, but they're not seeking him sincerely. They're living in hypocrisy. Basically, they're not following. Their words are not lining up or their actions are not lining up with what they are saying. That's, a, that's hypocrisy. They're in this truth or they they have this knowledge but they're using it you know for uh mischief or you know strife and you know um ulterior motives to be somebody to lift themselves up to exalt themselves to make something of themselves in this knowledge in this world to be looked at as some great person you know, many it's many things that can be listed and that can be said to basically turn you away from sincereness, right? That people are doing, and all these type of people will be put to death. 
Like I said, the Lord is, is not on your terms. It's on the Lord's terms. It ain't on our terms. We got to come correct for him. We got to meet his requirements and his standards on how he want us to be. And we, we, we walk in that and we apply that until the end, until the end of the society, until Yahweh Shah returns, and then we may be saved if we have the elect. So, hope this is edifying that I'm going to say, Shalom.